I was in Flagstaff, Arizona, as a student at Northern Arizona University. Landed, got off the plane, started down the, 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 the ramp, and I said, oh my God, Afghanistan's hot. <laughs> and it's dusty. And it smells. And they got us on a bus, and they were going to take us to the embassy to start the settling in process. And what we didn't realize is it wasn't settling in, it was the start of mm -hmm. the great adventure of our yes. youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we gave some awards this morning too. We just generally give them out with no fanfare, but we timed it up to coincide with the, the event here. We gave our third gold award. You know, I have to explain that to most groups. And, you know what the third gold award is. It's an award presented to folks who do the third gold award. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and our starfish award. And the starfish award has a little different resonance. It's based on the parable of the starfish. And, and I give the parable of the starfish a Persian, a, a, a Persian slave. So the great hero, Rostam, was a seven-year-old boy. This is an apocryphal version of the starfish parable. <laughs> Rustam died in Kabul at the age of 630. He almost beat Methuselah, I think. And this is, this is fiction, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a seven-year-old boy in this narrative. And he's far from his mother's home in Kabulistan. He's on the, the banks, the bluffs of the Persian Gulf. And that day, a big shamal had blown out of the Rubel Khali in the Saudi Arabian desert. And it pushed surf and sand and tide up against the Persian shore. And at Pishim, the sun is setting, the wind abruptly stops, the tide pulls back, and thousands of starfish are left above the high tide mark. Mm. So the young hero sees this, and runs down and starts throwing the starfish back into the ocean. His father, Zal, who according to the Epic is half demon, and you don't want to get those folks mad. <laughs> Sees that his son has left the festivities, and walks down to the beach, and he's angry, and says, Rostam, what are you doing here? He said, Father, dear, I have seen all of these starfish above the highest tide mark, and they're going to all die. And Zal says, son, this shore goes up into Babylon and out into the great ocean. You can't possibly make a difference for these creatures. And as the last glimmer of sun sets in the Persian Gulf, the person who will become the greatest hero of Persian antiquity as a seven-year-old bends, he picks up one starfish, tosses it into where that last glimmer of light is disappearing, and says, Padar Jan Father dear, with respect, I made a difference for that one. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do sometimes. Today I gave that award, I was honored to give the award to Zubair Trapsada, one of our former exchange students, and we gave the um, third gold award to Fran and Will Irwin for their book on the early years of Peace Corps in Afghanistan. And you can probably tell that wasn't really read. Now the next stuff's going to be read, so it's going to be a little more laborious. And <laughs> I'm not telling you all anything. These are necessary. Um, I did my country, my, my in-country training in Ghazni, where Abul Qasem Ferdowsi, the author of the Shahnameh, this great Persian epic that features Rostam, wrote that the challenge to those of us who would lead a noble and honorable existence is to live, to love, to learn, and to leave a lasting legacy. I appreciate the, the, the applause. That pause was not for effect. I lost my place. <laughs> because there was Peace Corps in Afghanistan, we are PCDs have promoted programs which have provided educational opportunity to more than 50,000 Afghan students, mostly girls, in post-Taliban Afghanistan. We've sent tens of thousands of Luis Pascal's Afghan children's songbooks free to kids in rural areas and in Kabul. We've sent scores of computers and more than a ton of school supplies to recipients in dozens of Afghan school districts. 
We've hosted African <coughs> exchange students, and we even support some of SOLA, the School of Leadership Afghanistan's approximately 40 girls in America on scholarship. We've contributed to Afghan women's libraries in the United States and Kabul. We've helped fund Khalid Husseini's disaster relief programs in the Wakhan Corridor. And we also support Growing Peace in Afghanistan Weepers Project, which assists religious and ethnic minority Hazara women. But for Friends of Afghanistan to leave a lasting legacy, we need your help. You can all join Friends of Afghanistan Free you don't even probably have to write this down. You can probably remember this. And here's why we need your help. Our youngest members are 60 years old. So please introduce us to any RPCDs in your social network who subsequently served in Afghanistan. And to all others who've served in Afghanistan in any capacity since our 1979 departure. We want generational viability so our organization can continue to work for peace, security, and prosperity in our beloved host nation, Afghanistan. We are friends of Afghanistan. Now here's the one you can remember. And I am Tony at afghanconnections.org. Zendabushi wa alhamdulillah. Thank you. Live long. <laughs> And may the Lord bless you all. We have a country of service award, and our next award goes to a geographical region of the United States. The Return Peace Corps volunteers of Wisconsin-Madison has shown outstanding commitment to community service through its We All Multicultural posters. This project builds off of and further expands the impact of the highly successful International Calendar Project, which actually won the Rupee Award back in 1994. How many of us own a current 2015 International Calendar? Who's got it hanging up at their office or at home? And how many people have purchased a 2016 calendar for next year? Woohoo! Um, and I'd also like to thank MPCA and the RPCB community for continuing the Ruby Award and the spirit of the Ruby Award over the years. But more importantly, I'd like to thank every single person who raised their hand today and said that they had purchased a calendar or uh, either for yourself or for the group fundraising. That's exactly why we've been able to do as well as we have. It's, it's all of us working together. And I'd like to thank, oh, it looks like Carrie is gone. Oh my gosh, she's here. <laughs> I'd really like to thank you for, for mentioning the, the Let Girls Learn grant. It's so much easier when somebody else blows your horn. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's definitely, as I said, it's, it's the result of everybody's support of the programs. I'm happy to accept this award on behalf of Shar Thompson, who has been the leader and the, the force behind the We All Poster Project. And <laughs> okay. The We All Poster Project has been a labor of love for about six years. Teachers were asking for images of the calendars that they could use in the schools. They would just tear out the pages and leave them up for years, probably, but certainly throughout the school year, and try to develop lessons around them. So they were asking for more from us, and we developed the posters based on that concept. We, we all have the same needs, desires, and dreams for the future. Americans do not have a monopoly on the human condition, and that's precisely what the Ruby Award recognizes. The We All Poster Project has um, started with pictures from the international calendar, and longtime purchasers of the calendar may recognize this Ecuadorian couple from the December 2002 calendar.
All right. Um, as the director of the Office of Third Goal uh, at the Peace Corps, it really warms my heart to see all the amazing work that the Friends Up groups and the geographically focused groups are doing. Um, you are the heart and soul of the Third Goal of the Peace Corps, so keep up the wonderful work. Um, so another round of applause for the Friends of Afghanistan and the RPCDs of Wisconsin United. Um, and it is my pleasure to introduce Joby Taylor, RPCD Gabon, 1991 to 1993. He is the director of the Schreiber Peace Worker Program in Baltimore and the NPCAA board member. Please, a warm round of applause to welcome Mr. Joby Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Peace Corps volunteers, stay as you are. Be servants of peace, work at home, as you have worked abroad, humbly, persistently, intelligently. Serve your neighborhoods, serve your cities, serve the poor. Join with others who serve. Serve, serve, serve. That's the end. That is the challenge. Any, uh, re recognize the quote? That's Sarge Schreiber. Was anyone there? Remember where he delivered that? Lincoln Memorial. At the Lincoln Memorial. What anniversary? Memorial. After, after I think this was early, maybe the 40th. 40th. Yeah. yeah. Sergeant Schreiber, um, as someone who works at the Schreiber Center in this legacy, um, I got to know Sarge later in his life, and I've been thought a lot about uh, kind of the core spirit that um, moved him, really a, a faith I would describe it as, and I think the shortest uh, phrase that I have to think about this is, is faith that peace followed service, that if you can create settings and programs where people come together across lines of difference and collaborate to solve a problem or meet a need, that uh, there's a ripple effect that uh, impacts peace. Um, I think that was imbued into the Peace Corps as well as his life's work beyond that. The peace follows service. This year's awardee, Ralph Bolton, um, was one of the early volunteer groups to arrive in Peru. He served in the um, Altiplano, the Upper Plains region. Um, of southern Peru. Maybe a year after he arrived, um, flooding displaced many communities. He was um, engaged in work to help relocate those communities, and it's become something that he's carried forward, creating the Tiknaya Foundation, first supporting a village move, really with the uh, the is that grassroots, bottom-up um, development approach that leads to sustainable uh, villages in this process. He's continued that work. I think they're supporting 15 rural villages now, um, relocated and um, thriving. So I want to invite Ralph Bolton to receive this year's Sergeant Shriver Award for Distinguished Humanitarian Service from the NPC. I say our work because 
This award belongs to everyone who has participated in the activities of the Foundation in Rural Communities in Highland, Peru. To the dedicated members of our all-volunteer board, to our donors, to other organizations that contribute to our projects, to the hardworking staff of our counterpart organization in Peru, the Asociación Pro Dia, and above all, to the Andean people with whom we collaborate. Allow me to be a bit more specific, with a little history. The Chignaya Foundation owes its existence to a small group of our PCBs. Uh, the year after I returned from my stint in the Peace Corps in, 19, uh, in 1965, a year later, I was hired to serve as a Peace Corps trainer for a new group of volunteers. Uh, and in 2005, that group held a reunion in Santa Fe where I was living at the time. And they invited me to uh, attend their reunion. They were eager for news of Peru, and I had just returned from Peru following a three-decade hiatus. Uh, and so I related tales from my trip, uh, including my return to the community of Chignaya, where I had worked as a Peace Corps volunteer. I was one of the first volunteers to request an extension. In the margins, Mankiewicz wrote a note to tell me that Sarge thought one of the funniest things he'd ever heard was the idea that Frank had sent this poor volunteer out into the farthest reaches of the Altiplano and had not heard from him again until the request for <laughs> In those early years, we were pretty much on our own to find our way. There were no cell phones, indeed in rural areas, no phones, uh, no internet, of course, and only sporadic contact with PC staff hundreds of miles away. I do recall, unfortunately, a PC doctor, however, actually tracking me down to my village to give me my gamma globulin shots. <laughs> the freedom was exhilarating, challenging, and perhaps a little scary. The Peace Corps arrived in Peru in September 1962, and I was one of the first to arrive within the first week. My initial assignment was to work in rural communities as an anthropologist for a Peruvian agency, the program of Puno Tambo Papa. I'd had two courses in anthropology. <laughs> However, I was recruited by another agency called Puno to serve as field director for an emergency relief program assisting villages to relocate villagers whose homes and livelihoods had been destroyed by a major flood along Lake Titicaca and Lake Rio Amis. Our re work resulted um, the, Excuse me, the, um, my boss um, was an engineer and agronomist, Hugo Contreras, who was on a mission. The project was designed as a pioneering experimental agrarian reform project <coughs> at a time when he was prohibited from engaging in agrarian reform. Our, uh, so he, he designed this project as, um, as, as, as uh, emergency relief and we didn't call it a grant before. Uh, our work resulted in the creation of a new community on Hacienda land purchased from the Bishop of Puno, the only person who would sell us any land. And the new community, Chignaya, became known as one of the most progressive communities in all of Peru. I was involved in all aspects of the organization of the new community, from writing the bylaws for the cooperative structure of the community, to supervising the construction of new housing for everyone, to designing income-producing activities. It was extremely gratifying to live and work intimately with these Quechua-speaking foreign families. After my Peace Corps service ended, I continued to return to Peru periodically for 10 years to carry out ethnographic research. But in the 1980s, my work moved in another direction uh, in response to the emerging AIDS pandemic. For almost uh, 20 years I was involved in HIV AIDS prevention efforts in the US and Europe. And for this reason and one other, I did not return to Peru for 30 years. In the 1980s and 1990s, Peru suffered the tragic consequences of the terrorism inflicted by Shining Path and by the repressive response by the government. It was too dangerous to return. In 2003, to my surprise, I received an out-of-the-blue email from someone whose email address included the name of my village, Chignaya. This email was from a man 
who had been a child of six when I worked in his village. He was searching the internet for information about the community and happened upon my name. As he told me, he remembered the name and more vaguely, he remembered me, but he recalled the tales his parents had told about the very early years of the creation of the community and my role in founding the community as a peaceful volunteer. He urged me to return to visit. And so late in 2004, my son and partner and I went to Peru as tourists, we thought. With a two-day notice of our arrival, the community arranged a fiesta to celebrate our return. Um, dance troops, two bands, poetry recitations, a communal meal, a tour of the village, a visit to the school and kindergarten, and on and on. It was an all-day affair. There were speeches, and they began to ask me, wouldn't you like to help us again? So I was being thrust immediately back mm -hmm. into the role of volunteer. Mm -hmm. I hadn't intended that. We hesitated to commit to anything more than some computers for the school. But returning to the States with a portfolio of projects the community had in mind, probably about a million dollars worth, <laughs> uh, and urged on by the reunion group of RPCBs, we decided to get serious and the Chignaya Foundation was supported. We currently work in some 20 Quechua speaking communities on the Altiplano, a region where conditions are extraordinarily difficult, located at elevations between 12,500 and 15,000 feet. These communities are amongst the poorest in South America. The Altiplano suffers droughts, frequent droughts, crop killing frosts, hail, freezing temperatures, and floods. Moreover, most of these communities rarely receive aid from the government or NGOs. With a long history of neglect at best and exploitation at worst, the people are often suspicious of outsiders. The Peace Corps has no volunteers in this region, and indeed no volunteers have worked here since 1975, mm -hmm. when the Peace Corps was expelled from Peru by a military junta. Returning only in 2002 during the government of Alejandro Toledo, mm -hmm. and that's another Peace Corps success mm -hmm. story that I can't go into. Allow me to enumerate some of the distinguishing characteristics of the way we work with the Chiknaya Foundation. We're a small organization with no pretensions of becoming a global charity. For us, the focus is on efforts to improve the quality of life in a fairly limited network of communities where our knowledge of the culture and our sustained involvement help us to be effective partners. We are committed to these communities for the long haul. We believe in an integrated approach to community development rather than one uh, involving a single type of intervention. The goal is to launch communities on their own path to continuing progress. We believe there are synergies associated work with working simultaneously on health, education, and income enhancement projects. The range of activities carried out with our communities is broad. Some might say too broad. Regular dental care and, and vision care, smoke-free stoves, microfinance loans for animal sheds, purchase of better forage seeds, feed, feeding troughs, milking stations, the construction of cheese factories, well perf perforations, alpaca genetic improvement and herd management programs, ceramic production and equipment for artisans, community purchase of agricultural equipment, <coughs> scholarships for village youth to attend university, and a few other things. Yeah. Our projects must emerge, however, from the expressed needs of the communities themselves. We do not go looking for communities, nor do we propose projects. Communities must come to us with their own ideas, a bottoms-up approach rather than top-down. Our aim is to empower communities. Much of our work does involve microfinance projects in which rotating loan funds are set up in communities and administered by the community. I would like to extend an invitation to all of you to come and visit us in Peru. <coughs> we are always happy to show visitors our projects. In addition, I invite you to join us in our work as volunteers here at home or in Peru, and of course to donate, especially now that we have a matching challenge grant of $50,000 wow. for loyal and generous support. I would like to suggest that the Chennai model might be something many of you could consider 
as a basis for getting involved again or staying involved with communities where you have served. I'm aware that each Peace Corps experience is different, but each of you might think about uniting with other returned Peace Corps volunteers from your country to continue your own humanitarian work. You do not need to create an enormous global organization to make a difference. Perhaps the NPCA might hold workshops or provide other assistance to groups of volunteers wishing to create their own small nonprofits and remain involved uh, after the Peace Corps service. For me, the past 10 years have been extremely gratifying to be working once more with some of the people I knew as friends 50 years ago, or with their sons and daughters, or their grandchildren. For most volunteers, our Peace Corps years were among the best and most significant years of our lives. Mm -hmm. To have or to reestablish a connection to those years and those people is incomparably rewarding. Mm -hmm. In the Andes, it is common when departing to hear the refrain, do not forget us. Mm -hmm. This is probably true elsewhere as well. How can we forget? I urge you not to forget. I urge you to continue to serve and maintain close ties with the people you knew. These friendships across cultures are what Peace Corps is all about. Ties that offer the promise of a more peaceful world. Thank you. Gracias. Dios paga su
but great risk of being entirely abandoned. She was brought into the household of a Peace Corps volunteer who set her on her path. And Burhani, who is here now to accept the award, can tell us about her own experience and her own words. And this is many, many years later, 40 years or more, and now we have somebody who's become a tremendously effective, influential, widely respected actor for social change, particularly on behalf of the disabled. And it all traces back to a very close relationship to an inspired act of love from a Peace Corps volunteer long ago. So I'd like to welcome Barhani here to accept the
guys all. So Mary, please come yeah. up here. Thank you. 